Hello, today we're gonna to talk about another layer one cryptocurrency that says they've solved the blockchain trilemma of decentralization, scalability, and security. Today we're gonna to talk about Cadena and uh, some of the exciting things that they've got going for them. And one of those are the founders are actually the people that created JP Morgan's first blockchain, Juno, and their advisors are co-inventors of blockchain and the most cited author in Satoshi Nakamoto's renowned 2008 Bitcoin white paper. If you're excited to find out about Cadena and how it functions and the direction that they're planning on going with it, then click that like button, subscribe, and click that bell notification. We'll let you know when we've got other uh, exciting altcoin videos that are coming out in the future. Also want to let you know, of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And please do your own due diligence before you jump into any cryptocurrency. So Cadena is a scalable layer one proof of work blockchain. Uh, layer one meaning they've created their own coding for the, uh, for the coin from the ground up and for the whole blockchain. And proof of work is uh, the most secure uh, way to build uh, blocks on blockchain, uh, the, same, the same thing that uh, Bitcoin is using. Um, and what they are focusing on with theirs is scalability. Um, they're using their own smart contract language, Pact, and uh, they say that they, can, that they have already uh, scaled up to 450,000 transactions per second, uh, which uh, if you compare that with uh, Bitcoin is 10 transactions per second. And when you compare that to Visa, Visa gets about 60,000 transactions per second. So we're talking about more transactions per second possible than what Visa can do. So uh, that makes it very usable for institutions and uh, anybody else that wants to build on top of the network itself. Then if we look at uh, their chain web and basically looking at how their uh, structure actually works. So Cadena was uh, inspired by Bitcoin. And if we look at uh, Bitcoin, the way it's structured, you basically just have a block and then uh, another block's created and those blocks uh, create a chain but if we then split that off and create two chains, but those two chains are then braided together, this is where the braided technology comes in that Cadena is using in order to get things to speed up, but still have that same security. In a lot of sharded blockchains, uh, you just have linear chains that all then go back to a central block. But if we then, uh, braid those together, the security is still there. And this is the structure they came up with. Here we are braiding together three Bitcoin-like chains to further improve security and scalability. Notice that there are now many more reference points as each newly mined block points to its own previous block in addition to that of all their peer chains. If we continue to add more chains, it requires a more efficient base graph to propagate information across the network without sending so many reference point messages. Cadena's breakthrough comes by taking this early idea of Bitcoin braiding and scaling it dramatically. We do so by leveraging graph theory. Instead of an arbitrary communication structure, as can be found in some DAG-based platforms, Cadena uses a fixed graph structure to optimize for propagating information across the network. In the case of this 10-chain structure, Cadena uses the Peterson graph so that each chain only needs to communicate with three peer chains instead of all nine of the others. Once those three peer chains communicate with their own three peers, the entire network is linked in only two communication jumps. Taking this idea one layer further, Cadena continues to scale throughput and security in the network by braiding 20 chains together. Leveraging a fixed graph approach is unique to Cadena and they're saying that they can continue to scale this past 20 chains, that's just where they're at right now, and that uh, they have done tests of up to 145,000 transactions per second uh, with these the 20 chains that they've got going right now. 
Um, so the protocol decreases uh, the duration of time where attacker could get lucky against an honest network. Let's say, think of an attacker needing to flip six coins and get all heads, so mine six blocks, versus needing to flip 12 coins and get all heads, mine six blocks from two related chains. So if we've got, tw the more chains we have, the actually the, the more difficult it would be to hack the system itself. They've created their own smart contracts in uh, their language called Pact, which is an open source, uh, source language that they've created. Um, and uh, the coding actually checks itself um, against the intent of the programmer. And we can see in their example how uh, it's a much easier to read coding. If we look at, you know, it's creating account, create a new account ID with initial balance funds, et cetera, um, enforce key set. Admin, administer key set. So it's it's fairly easy to read uh, compared to like if I hit control U on uh, on this, you can see what the, the coding was for this page of this website. Uh, it doesn't make much sense uh, looking at that as compared with their language. So they're, they're wanting to make the language where uh, even non-coders will possibly be able to create uh, apps with uh, this coding language itself. Here's a Medium article that they posted on August 20th, uh, 2020. So this is a, a ways back, um, but they did say that they scaled to 480,000 trans uh, transactions per second on uh, 20 chains. I'll have uh, all the links to these articles uh, posted below if you do want to dive deeper into the uh, Cadena itself. So we'll go back to the founders. Uh, once again, uh, it was Stuart Popejoy who uh, led JP Morgan's Amer Emerging Blockchain Group. And uh, if we look at uh, his uh, LinkedIn profile itself, uh, we can see he's been programming since 1992, starting out at Apple for a few months, um, moving on to being programmer analysts. Um, he's actually worked on front end to financials databases way back uh, from 92 to 96. Uh, in uh, 2001 to 2007, he designed and developed systems for quoting and trading um, over-the-counter equities. And, uh, and then 2007 to 2011, built and maintained direct software development of algorithmic trading. So he's been in um, financial institutional developing um, over the time, over the years, and uh, even uh, from 2011 to 2014, focused on multi-asset class options, futures, equities, and portfolio strategies uh, with this coding. And then uh, in uh, 2011, 2016, he worked to design and develop transformative technologies in blockchain and smart contracts, namely the Juno coin for JP Morgan. So uh, pretty serious uh, background there. And then uh, we've also got Will Martino, who actually worked um, in the SEC's Cryptocurrency Steering Committee, which with uh, all the fears of regulation coming up, uh, good to have somebody on the team that's already worked with the SEC, might have some good connections uh, there as far as that goes. So we're, we're, we've got the top of the... Uh, at the top of the institutional financial chain with JP Morgan and uh, work with the SEC. We can look at Will Martino's uh, LinkedIn profile, uh, see that he was educated at Yale um, and was a student at the Recurse Center. He worked as senior science advisor at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, which, of course, they can't say anything about what he was really doing there since it's it's all uh, top secret information. Uh, but he he was there for uh, over two years. So while working as a financial technology manager uh, or a v and a VP at uh, J.P. Morgan, he presented a Juno to the Hyperledger Foundation in June town, uh, June. 2016 after working on uh, designing a protocol that exhibited high performance and low latency uh, being as robust as uh, Bitcoin derived technology as far as that goes. And then uh, 2016 to present, uh, he's been founder and president of Cadena. So they've got a really strong team. They've got really uh, interesting technology and what they're going to need to do is scale it and while we've got really smart people on the team, and if we uh, 
look further at the team, we can see that they're, the team is, is uh, good sized. What they don't have is a lot of marketing going on for the uh, ecosystem right now. Uh, so if we look at it, there's only 53 projects uh, that are listed on the ecosystem right now. Um, the top ones are mostly exchanges and then they've got some wallets. Uh, and, and there are some more interesting uh, things. They've got uh, partnerships with UFO Gaming that's a metaverse um, and uh, some other uh, layer ones they've got contracts with, etc. cetera. Um, Flux is interesting because it's uh, basically cloud computing, but on the blockchain, there's gonna be a big need for that in institutions in the future. And uh, one of the other uh, negatives that a lot of people see about this is that they're taking uh, basically 100 years to uh, get the, all the tokens uh, released. And uh, they did uh, adjust their uh, platform emissions. Uh, they're, they're saying that uh, emissions are going to be completed uh, for the platform itself by 2030. Mining emissions will go on for much longer. And they have uh, dedicated most of the uh, most of the coins, I think I might have said tokens, these are all coins because it's layer one, um, but all the coins, 70% uh, of the coins are being delegated to miners. And then uh, we've got 20% to the platform, 6% are investors, 3% are contributors, and then they did burn uh, 1%. Uh, looking at Kadena right now, uh, we're at uh, about 92 cents, and we are down looking at the max, uh, and we are at uh, a yearly low right now, which uh, could be a good time to get in, although we have no idea if we've seen the bottom of the market yet. If we look back uh, a little bit at uh, the 2021 bottom of the market, we can see that uh, we are below uh, a, a, an important uh, point uh, that we hit in May at $1.36, and we're kind of sitting around uh, where we were uh, in August of uh, 2021. But if we don't hold this and if there is another catalyst in the market, we could see uh, a dump all the way to 50 or 35 cents. But if we do just zoom into the last uh, part of the last year and looking at the last 90 days, we can see where the FTX insolvency uh, came about. It looked like uh, we were off of a bottom of $1.26 and uh, now we've had this dump all the way to 80 cents, spiked up to a dollar and now we're right in the middle of that. So it'll be interesting to see where the price uh, goes from here. And this is why dollar cost averaging can be a, a great idea if you are interested in getting into a coin or token. We can also look at GitHub. And the reason we look at that is just to see uh, how uh, often things are getting updated. Um, if we scroll down, we can see that the, the chain web data was updated an hour ago. Chainweaver updated two hours ago, packed updated two hours ago, five hours ago, nine hours ago. So they're continuing to work on, on everything within the system. So there are a lot of layer one companies out there vying for that speed, scalability, and security. Uh, Kadena does uh, seem to have a lot of potential in the future. I would just keep an eye on them and see if they are getting more partnerships. It's gonna take uh, more partnerships to see that uh, price really starting to move. And with their coin, it does have a cap of 1 billion coins, but uh, it since it is uh, a long-term distribution on that, uh, that might be something that holds back uh, some of the price uh, increases that we would see with other coins that already have most of the coins out there distributed. So uh, keep an eye on Kadena. Uh, feel free to do some more research. I'll have links to all the articles below and the website so you can uh, do a deeper dive into the coin yourself. And uh, if you're interested in finding out about other altcoins that have potential for this next bull run, then click that uh, like button, uh, subscribe, and click that bell notification. We'll let you know when we've got new videos released. So thanks for your time. Peace and love, and I'll catch you in the next one.